Hello everyone and here we are again. We are live on day number 13 of our 66 days of data with Nime live stream challenge 66 live streams in a row or maybe more you decide by your um yeah by your voice by subscribing liking commenting whatever you want to do so yesterday we concluded section number two where we talked about descriptive statistics things like standard deviations mean mode median and this kind of stuff and today we start section number three and section number three is all about five nifty lessons about histograms. Once again, they help us to have a deeper insight into our data set. So let me just quickly show you what I'm talking about. Here we are on the website. You can find the link down below in the description, dated exploration in 66 days of data with Nime and we are in histograms already. So today we're going to learn more about histograms. So let's start off with a great um, view, but first of all, let me just pop that up here. So it's not obstructing too much of the information here in the live stream. All right. So first we look at math is fun, which in itself is a fantastic website. Um, and we are going to talk about histograms and they are basically a graphical display of data using bars of different height, heights. Well, you might ask, what is the difference between a histogram and a bar chart? Well, it is similar to a bar chart, but a histogram groups numbers into ranges. So once again, it's a tool to evaluate our data set, to look at our data set and find interesting stuff about it. For example, they give us the height of orange trees. Um, you decide to put results into, uh, you basically have um, uh, uh, trees in the orchard in centimeters and the heights vary from 100 centimeter to 340 centimeters and you decide to put the results into groups of 50 centimeters. So you see like 100, 150, 200, 250 and so on. And these are basically like buckets or I have learned that as well. Sometimes it's also called bins or binning. So that is also a term we have to keep in mind. So um, how much um, basically uh, what the size of your bins are? Well, you can decide. You can decide to have like in this example to have it um, to have it predefined where you said every bin should have a size of 50 centimeters so 50 centimeter range for my trees um, but you can also um, basically um, let the tool in our case nine decide what the bin size is and the bin size is also referred to and that's quite interesting here um, it's called a class interval all right so um, so histograms are a great way to show results of continuous data, such as why, weight, height, how much time, etc., etc. So um, where it's also happening quite a lot, and that's also maybe something we might want to have a look at when we look at our data, is a frequency histogram. A frequency histogram is basically a graph that uses vertical columns to count the um, amount or the frequency, if you want, of a certain um, type. And you can do these frequency histograms, at least it's my assumption, um, also with nominal values, meaning not numbers, right? If you have an, an, an online, uh, you have sales data from, from all your stores plus your online stores, you can have, for example, three um, bins where you say, okay, I have one with credit card, I have one without credit card, and I have online store with credit card. These are the basically descriptors, and you can have these three columns, and then you just count the frequency for each and every one of them. All right, but there is more to histograms. And what I really like a lot, um, here is once again, and that's the second link here on that page, what I really liked a lot here, um, it's a little bit repetitive, of course, it, uh, it, um, 
uh, determines um, basically um, the same thing or it tells you the same thing. Um, but here is some um, additional information on how wide you make your bins. So like here, the bins are too small. We have too many gaps. And here the bins are too large because you see these big jumps and also having maybe here like um, tens would be a good bin, 10 would be a good bin size or um, class interval, so to say. Um, so once again, they also lay out what is the difference between a bar chart and a histogram. And finally, we want to have a look here at um, a chart here, and that's um, linked here, a complete guide to um, histograms. Um, once again, um, basically, what is a histogram? But this one is also interesting. When you should use a histogram. Histograms are good for showing general distribution features. And here comes in what we've talked about a few days ago when we talked about left skewed or right skewed data sets or symmetrical data sets that look more like the standard deviation, right? <clears throat> so that's that's very interesting. And what I liked here is also the best practices. Never or always start a bin at zero and never start at 80 because the assumption is always that it starts at zero. zero. So um, here you can also see some thinkings about what bin size or what class interval you should use. And we see some common misuses. So um, maybe um, that's that's not a good one. And we also um, don't want to use unequal bin sizes. All right. So this basically is it for today. Tomorrow we're going to use what we have learned today and apply it in NIME. We have seen histograms, at least partially, already in the Data Explorer. But tomorrow we're going to add a histogram ourselves to our existing data set. So that's it for today. And if you want to see more of this stuff, please hit like and subscribe because this helps me to keep this channel alive. This helps me to create more content for you. I see you tomorrow in 66 days of data with Naim. Take care and bye bye.